Inflation hitting a new 40-year high in the month of March. Americans especially getting hit hard at the grocery store. The price of items like dried beans, canned vegetables, flour, all up better than 10 percent from the same time just one year ago. Joining me right now is the president and CEO of Goya Foods, Bob Unanwe. Bob, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Assess the situation. How do you see inflation today? Uh, good to see you, Maria. We are on the precipice of a global food crisis. God created humanity. Humanity has created every way to destroy itself from nuclear, biological, chemical. But now we've waged a war. We've weaponized food. In the Ukraine, between the Ukraine and Russia, they represent 50% of the world's production of fertilizer. 30% wheat, 20% corn, 2.5 million acres of sunflowers, other uh, food and, and minerals. They also have sand for fracking, sand for glass. And, you know, they, they have, with Russia's doing with their land bridge, they're also cutting off the Ukraine to the sea. They've taken Mariupol pretty much. Odessa is left. If they cut off Odessa, then they basically landlock the Ukraine and they can't export. They can't either plant. Uh, right now, we're in the planting season in southeast Ukraine, where all these products are grown. They've attacked irrigation systems. They've attacked uh, train systems. And they've sent millions of women and children into exile. But let me say that we have provoked, in a way, this war by showing an incredible uh, weakness around the globe and lack of resolve to protect the women, children, and the innocent. It started in wow. Afghanistan. When, when we left women and children behind, usually women and children go first, we left them behind. And now they've sent yeah. millions of women into exile. If the United States, the greatest country on earth, doesn't stand up for the defenseless, who will? We will lose this country yeah. unless we love and build versus hate and destroy. This, we've given the green light around the world for people to abuse right. and exploit women and children. We've given that green light by showing well, our weakness. Well, Bob, I, I understand everything that you're saying, and the Afghanistan debacle really triggered so many bad outcomes uh, from, uh, you know, across, from our adversaries across the world. But what I'm really trying to understand is what's going on with the price of food. We're looking at double-digit increases in terms of the price. You are bringing into this conversation a much bigger issue and a potential food shortage crisis. Are you talking about a food shortage crisis where Americans are not going to have access to food, never mind paying up in the double digits for the price of food? America will say, let them eat cake, because we have abundance. We're the biggest consumers in the world. The countries that will suffer are the innocent ones in Africa and around mm -hmm. the globe. We are the biggest consumers of drugs, of trafficking, of, of everything. We're gluttonous. We're going to have to tighten our belt and consume less. less. We've gone from oil de independence to oil dependence. We've given up that position to, to have yeah. our oil at cost and to buy it retail and then ship it. Our shipping, when we bring in stuff from, let's say, Thailand, coconut water, we we're paying 10 times the freight we usually yeah. take. Now, we have oil in our land and in a pipe with this zero transportation, zero ecological disasters. Yeah. And we got to ship it in a boat and, and, and put uh, the, econ the, uh, the, the world in jeopardy if a, if a, if a, yeah. if a ship is bombed or if it goes aground or, or whatever. So we've gone from right. oil independence to be dependent. We're dependent now on everybody yeah. else. We're the greatest nation on earth. Well, we've been as, dependent yeah. on nobody. As opposed, well, we've given that as up. Opposed we've given to, that up. Yeah, as opposed to having the product in a pipeline under the sea. I, I understand the, the analogy and the comparison but, but, that you're making. Bob, let me get, let me get your take on this, because I, I get what you're but saying. But the cost it is of that, very, Maria. very frightening notion. The cost. What are you seeing in terms of the cost? And do you think that things are going to get worse? So you're sitting there at Goya. The, you are at a front row seat. Do you think these prices go even higher later on this year? Let's start there. The biggest component in, in food and anything is, is transportation. The transportation has gone as skyrocketed. 
because we've given up our independence. But, you know, when you have an unbalance in the food production, in 2008, the price of grains tripled. Why? Because we were planting corn for ethanol instead of uh, rice and grains and, and, and other things. You know, the amount of sugar in That's corn to produce ethanol, it takes three gallons of fuel to make five gallons of ethanol. Whereas if you're not using sugar cane, which is much more higher sugar content. So, you know, but when you have an imbalance in the world production, 50 percent of fertilizer, that's, the farmers are paying double for fertilizer. They're planting yeah. less. The yields yeah. are going to be less. Their costs are going to go up. You know, with 30 percent of the, the world's uh, wheat production, if that goes unplanted in the Ukraine and yeah. corn and other things, that, we you know, we, our world is very, uh, it's, it's on, it's a very tight balance. And if we interrupt sure. the food production, we will have a food crisis. Prices will go through the roof. We can afford it as a rich country. We're so abundant. But other countries, unfortunately, will not. And we will be the last ones affected. But like Marie Antoinette said, let them eat cake. Wow. Ryan, jump in. Curious. I mean, we hear about reshoring, Bob, of manufacturing and bringing everything back to the U.S., which doesn't really seem to be happening. Can you do the same thing with our imports of agriculture? I mean, can we reshore a lot of that so we're not dependent on the world and we're not in a situation like we are today with the, the whole Russian-Ukrainian war? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't quite get the question. I'm sorry. Well, can we start to bring some of those imports back to the U.S., where we actually do more planting here and we're not dependent on the rest of the world for our agriculture needs? Well, the U.S. is the largest, uh, one of the largest producers of, of, of food, but we're also the largest consumers. And But if you interrupt the uh, production of fertilizers and other crops around the world, it's going gonna, it's gonna, uh, dis to disrupt that. So, you know, we, we need to, uh, we've, the problem is we've outsourced a lot of, besides food, a lot of other things, and that's driven up the cost of things from drugs into China and chips. Yeah. I was hearing this morning about Ford. They need you need three thousand chips in a car to make yeah. to make a, a, the new Ford one fifty. And we're not making chips. That's we're right. depending on others. We're depending on others for food. We have the food. Well, we will well, be. We've been talking. It's not as yeah. big an issue here. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about this reliance now for several years. I do not understand why we're not seeing more progress. I mean, why we are reliant on the CCP, America's number one adversary, for our prescription drugs is just mind-boggling. Seventy percent of the underlying uh, uh, components of our prescription drugs are made in China. Bob, I mean, it's outrageous, but we're going to keep a spotlight on it and hope that Americans uh, understand these issues. Bob Unanway, thank you, sir, for your part in all of this. President thank and you, CEO Maria. of Goya.